Chapter 3 Version Control Systems One of the first version control systems was SCCS, which stands for Source Code Control System. From its name, we can learn that the origins of version control system can be traced back to software developers. They were the first group of people who not only faced this problem of working together on a bunch of files, but also had the means to come up with a way to make it more efficient. SCCS was first released in 1973, which most likely means that version control systems have been around for longer than you've been alive. Almost 10 years later, in 1982, RCS was released. It stands for Revision Control System, and to this day it is still maintained. Where RCS was intended to be used locally on a computer system, new systems emerged that relied on a centralized repository to allow people to collaborate on different systems. The two most significant members of this second generation of the version control systems were CVS, short for Concurrent Version System, and Subversion. For most people, these systems were good enough and the market for version control systems stalled somewhat as it was considered a solved problem. Except, not all software projects are the same size. Some people were collaborating on so many files with so many different people that the second generation of tools was not good enough for them. One such project was the Linux kernel. Started in 1991 as a hobby project by a Finnish student named Linus Torvalds, by 2002 the Linux kernel underpinned a multi-billion Linux market spearheaded by vendors such as Red Hat, SUSE and early adopters like IBM. The Linux kernel itself though was and is an open source project and while more and more people worked on the kernel professionally they were spread out not only geographically but also throughout many different companies. Keeping track of all the changes in the kernel was causing friction. So in 2002 Linus Torvalds made a decision that would send shockwaves through the open source world. He unilaterally announced that the Linux kernel would switch to BitKeeper as its version control system. BitKeeper used a more innovative approach to version control and did not rely on a central repository. The announcement was controversial because BitKeeper was a closed source product that was only available under a commercial license. And while Bitmover, the company behind the BitKeeper product, waived the license fee for Linux kernel developers, many kernel developers objected out of principle to having to use a closed source product to contribute to the open source Linux kernel. This went on for a while, until in 2005, Bitmover, the company, grew increasingly worried that the kernel developers would reverse engineer their technology. So they imposed further restrictions, which made it impossible for kernel developers to use their product. Faced with this dilemma, and in a move that would forever cement his reputation as an exceptionally gifted software engineer, Linus Torvalds decided to take matters into his own hands. He sat down and over the course of a couple of days wrote his own version control system, Git. A few years later, Every major open source project had migrated from Subversion to Git and sites like GitHub and GitLab sprung up to provide centralized Git hosting. Today, Git is a household name among developers as well as the de facto standard version control system on the planet. It's a remarkable success story with many parallels to Linux itself. Both are not only free for people to use, but their excellent technical foundations mean they have taken the world by storm.